everyone! In today's video, I'm back with the Animal and Habitat Art series that I started a while ago and today I'm drawing forest animals. So with this drawing, um, it's just like the other ones that I've done um, in the past. Uh, if you haven't watched the other videos, um, you can have a look at it. Uh, the main idea of the series was to draw animals from different habitats and to include as many animals as possible. Um, in this one, I'm doing the forest animals. This is the eighth piece from the Animal Habitat Art Series. I've got two more uh, to do um, and then the series will be complete. Uh, so basically, uh, I look, did a lot of research um, just to give you a bit of background uh, in case you haven't seen those previous videos. Um, I did a lot of research into all the animal habitats and the different animals um, that live in them and also um, basically got a lot of uh, reference photos that are royalty free, search for them, uh, basically you have to get a good um, reference photos that I could use and once all of that was done, um, I compiled a list and selected animals that I wanted to include um, in the series or in each piece for the series um, and then I basically sketched out all of the animals on a spread. Uh, some, of the, some of the animals are quite a few in a um, in a piece or in a habitat, for example, uh, ocean animals uh, or marine animals, and then you get your savanna or grassland animals. They had double spreads, rainforest as well. Uh, but then, anim uh, sorry, uh, habitats like uh, polar regions, deserts, wetlands, mountains, those had um, a single page spread. Uh, I am using a sketchbook, it's A4 size uh, for these um, illustrations of these animals. Um, and you'll notice um, that the drawings are done in pencil, but it's not uh, graphite pencil. I'm using water-soluble uh, graphite pencil for these drawings. Um, that's just so that I don't have harsh graphite lines showing through um, when I do the drawing complete. So um, that's basically what the series is about. Um, if you want more details on this, you can watch my first video from the series of uh, the desert animals. Uh, there you'll see, uh, I'll go more into detail into why I started the series and more details into how I uh, basically work on each piece. Um, but each video I do explain my process so you will get an idea of how I go about each um, piece um, watching those videos if you'd like to see them. So uh, all those materials I use um, for this will be listed in the description below. I am using the Derwent Intense uh, pencils for this. Um, I just find the ink is, uh, you know, gives a very good uh, illustrative uh, look to my drawings. So just to give you an idea what I'm doing now um, is I am basically using the sketch just as a guide and then I start using the darkest color which will be um, a dark black or, or sorry a dark brown or a black uh, depending on what I'm what color I'm looking for but I'll start with the darkest color and I will just apply it according to the direction of the fur um, and also uh, the shape and uh, pattern as well um, and then I will like you can see with the shipmunk I'm looking at the pattern of stripes on his back and then I'm just going through with different color browns based on my reference photo and layering in those um, fur details or the areas of the fur then I come through with a small brush, this is a very uh, small brush uh, just with water and I start going over the areas but I maintain the direction of the fur and that's just to get the um, activate the ink of the pencils and then I go through with a white gel pen just to really um, define some of those highlights in the eyes. Um, if the white gel pen is too light then I do come through with um, a paint pen. Um, you, the, list, uh, the one I'm using will be listed in the description below as well as some um, uh, or a, a multi-liner or a fine liner black one just for some fine whiskers or uh, some details to the eyes if I need to do that then I use a black fine liner and then um, also um, I can use also sometimes for depending on the animal and what I need I use a white uh, color pencil just to uh, lighten up certain areas that I want a bit lighter. Um, yeah, basically that's how I go about with each piece. I start off with the initial sketch and um, with the initial sketch done in water soluble pencil, that just gives me indication of the proportions and the uh, where the placement of the eyes, nose, ears, etc. are. 
and then I start to work through um, with the pencils, with the intense pencils and after applying multiple layers, um, paying close attention to the reference photo with regards to the fur direction, um, the uh, patterns on the fur, uh, the shadow areas, the highlighted areas and after paying attention to all of those as well as the different colors that I require, I apply all of, the, all of it to the drawing first and then I start going through with a brush with some water and I keep a paper towel uh, close by just to dab my brush. I don't want too much of water. I just want to activate the ink. Uh, if I put too much water, it can um, basically remove some of the ink and also smudge it. So I avoid a lot of water. But you need to have all of the colors as much as possible uh, penciled down before going over with the water. Then I come through uh, when it's dry with either another layer of uh, the pencil uh, with water activated again or uh, I just use the pencil as it is dry just to get some of those textures if um, I need a te texture where I, the pencil is able to create that rough sort of fur or some uh, texture to the animal then I use it dry so uh, basically that's the process I use for all the illustrations um, and as I said I use the white gel pen or jelly roll just for some uh, highlights in the eyes or um, whiskers or if I need a large, large area of, of white or really opaque white um, like for spots or anything like that then I use a um, white paint pen and uh, also color pencil as well white color pencil as well um, yeah now these drawings of these animals are not meant or it was not intended uh, for this series that I've started uh, it was not intended for it to be hyper realistic um, they are realistic to a point where you can recognize the animals uh, you can see some details, you can see the shadows, you can see the body structure. Um, I paid a close attention to the muscle uh, structure, the skeletal structure as I was drawing them because I was looking closely at my reference photo which is something is very important. Uh, whatever reference you're using, um, look, at that, look at that reference and study it uh, as close as possible um, just to one, get your proportions right and get your values right because your values is what's, uh, is what's going to make the drawing look realistic and make it look more three-dimensional. Um, if I were to, for example, take uh, for that, uh, for the mousse that I just did, if I just use a solid brown over the entire mousse, um, it would look very flat and it's not going to look, it look, look, like, it look like a cartoon. It's not going to look uh, realistic or like the actual animal. So to create that muscular structure and the body shape and... Um, to make it look 3D, you need to use um, not only different colors, but you need to use uh, the colors for or darker colors for the shadows and get them as dark as they need to be and also retain the lighter areas where you need to have the highlights because those are very important to retain uh, because once ink is applied, it is difficult uh, to uh, correct. Although you can use a white paint pen if you have to. Um, to correct certain areas. I have done that uh, on a couple of uh, the animals so far that I've done um, but uh, it's better to try to retain those areas um, like you see uh, like you may have seen when I did the skunk earlier um, I retained the lighter areas and I applied the white intense pencil to those areas just to give it uh, obviously not let the paper be plain it needs to have some pencil over it and then I blended it too with um, a water on my brush but I just retain those lighter areas, um, especially in larger areas. It's better to retain the paper uh, or retain the white and then apply white pencil over and then apply the rest of the uh, ink with the colors that go around. So like I was saying, uh, this is not meant to be a hyper super realistic uh, drawings. Uh, these are supposed to just be illustrations. Uh, it was something that I've been wanting to do for a long time um, to draw as many animals. Uh, but I just didn't know how to go about doing it. So after giving it a lot of thought and thinking about it, I thought go with the animal habitats. I think that would be the best because I can include as many animals as I can, uh, as well as have them uh, categorized into different groups. Um, yeah, and another thing when it came to laying them down onto paper, that was a long process. Um, the drawings initially, uh, the sketches take a long time because one, you need to get the sketches onto paper. Um, 
I'm not competing with the sizes of the animals, for example. I'm not trying to make the elephant the largest on the page. Um, I'm just trying to depict each animal separately uh, so that you can see the animal and recognize the animal and also getting them to place them onto paper so that you are in a way that it looks, um, basically it looks nice and it, uh, so everything blends or, or fits in together. I don't want to have large areas without any drawings on it. I wanted them to be spread out quite evenly or as evenly as possible. Um, that's why many animals had to be redrawn. Um, some of them had to be shifted. I had to redraw them in another position. Uh, some I had to change the reference I used and use a different reference just because of the placement of them. Um, they were maybe not placed in the correct position or they were getting cut off on the page. Um, so that does happen when you're doing something like this, uh, especially if you confined to an A4 size page. Uh, you need to let them spread. I did want to have them overlap from page to page, um, but then I just decided, no, some of them do slightly overlap, but most of them are on, even though it's a double spread, they are on, um, each page has the animals on each side. So uh, yeah, this one was a double spread as well. Um, yeah, the other ones that I've done in the series were the desert animals, polar animals, uh, wetland animals, highland animals, which are your mountain animals. Um, I did marine animals, which um, I also did uh, the savanna or grassland animals, and I've done the rainforest animals uh, so far. So I think there's seven of them. This is the eighth one, forest animals. Um, and after this, I've got um, farm animals and domestic animals, your pets. So. Uh, those are the last two for the series. Um, I'm still working on those two pieces. Um, in between my other videos and my tutorials, I'm just working on them um, a little bit in between. I am going to try to my best to get both of those last two as well out before the end of December. Um, I want them both to be out, but I do have some other tutorials coming up as well as other um, videos that I'm going to be working on in between these. So yeah, you do have um, some other videos coming out besides these. Um, so if you have been following these, um, yeah, I haven't forgotten about them. I'm still working on them. And like I said, this is the eighth piece from the 10 and there's still two to come. So yeah, so if those of you who have been following the series and wanting to see how it's progressing, this is how far it's gone. Um, I have spent some time on this piece. And I must say it's been a long process because these videos take a long time or these drawings take a long time to do. Um, I mean, I spend easily four hours per page um, that's doing the inking. Um, that's not including the initial sketch. Um, if you include the initial sketches, it may be another hour or two um, to add to um, the drawings. I'm not really too sure. I don't really um, pay attention to how long it takes me to do the sketching part of it but usually I like to sketch all of the animals out, place them out according to my list, um, tick them off, mark off which animals I've included and then um, I start working on one by one, inking them and um, basically work from one to the other. You can see also when I'm doing these drawings that I've got a piece of paper or a paper, scrap paper under my hand that's just to avoid anything smudging uh, as I'm working. I don't want my hand to smudge anything or even um, the sketch of the other animals that I still I'm working left to right so the animals that uh, left to right top to bottom so any drawings that are underneath my hand my hand can uh, rub it off and it is very light the sketches um, the sketches are light because I'm using a water soluble graphite pencil so uh, they can get lightened um, really like almost erased with my hand so I try to use a paper over or paper under my hand just to protect those sketches and because those are going to be my guides for my drawings. So if you see, um, I think in my earlier um, uh, pieces from the series, so like the desert and uh, anim the desert animals and the polar animals, I think you will see. Uh, I've done the sketches as well in the video. I'm not too sure, but I think I've done it. But um, the reason why I'm not including it in the recent videos is because the sketches are very light and it's almost impossible to get them to show up on camera. So, uh, because some areas you really can't see what I'm doing. And basically all they are is just a guideline for me. So there's no real detail into the sketches. Some of them have or look like there's detail, but once I start going over them, like for example with this deer, um, I'm going to go over the 
spots where I place the spots and everything with the ink. So you're not going to see that sketch um, as I'm drawing. So once I start um, inking it, those sketch lines disappear. And then I start working um, and look at my reference photo and reestablish those. Basically, all my sketch is there to do is to get the placement of the animal, the proportions of the animal, as well as the placement or where the eyes are, the nose, the mouth, uh, for example, with reindeer, where the antlers are, where the ears are, the legs, just an idea where the tail is, just an idea of where everything goes. Um, I'm not looking at having everything detailed, just to get an idea, okay, this is where the shoulder is, that is where the... Um, the, the shadow areas are going to come so when I start inking I can just see more or less where it is but some most of it I need to go back to the reference photo and follow it um, I can't just use the drawing and start working on it there's a lot of things that will either get lost once I'm inking or it'll disappear or it'll be um, there'll be other details I need to add which I haven't included which will only I will see it on my reference photo so um, for this series um, this was just to give you some tips on how I've been doing the series, but um, I have got other videos where I go into detail with how I do the sketches, how I do the actual drawings, whether it's color pencil um, or acrylic paint, whichever medium I'm using, I go into more detail. Uh, with this one, it's more just an overview of what I'm doing, and it's a very quick video. Um, it's a lot of animals uh, for each spread and each piece, uh, but basically I just want to get um, all the animals drawn out and explain my process so that if you'd like to try out something like this or to use the ink and pencils you see my process of what I do when I'm using these pencils and when I'm doing these illustrations. Now with this case with the butterfly I did go with the yellow first and then I started adding the black over just to avoid smudging. Now, I actually worked with a very fine or small brush when I was doing the inking part of this. But it's still smudged here and there. It went, the black went into the yellow and the blue and they mixed up a bit. But um, I would have actually um, thought I could have done this actually made it easier for me if I could have maybe come through with the black um, after I put in all the lighter colors, inked them and then went over with the black and then inked it or used a fine liner maybe to ink it. Maybe that would have been easier, but I did it this way and um, yeah, it didn't come out perfect, but I was able to at least um, capture the look of the butterfly. In this case, the swallowtail butterfly. So some of the references I had, um, they didn't have the full animal completely visible. Um, in some instances, I had to do research and figure out the animal's placement. But in some of them, I just used the reference as it was. And I just included some of their um, surroundings, like if they on a branch, I included the branch. Or if they were in the grass, I included the grass, just to give you an idea of where they are. And basically, their body was hidden and I'm not sure what the, I can't, couldn't find references that showed me what the, um, or royalty free reference photos or to see even with the references what their legs look like or their back legs. So in that particular position. So then I just used the drawing I had or the reference I had and included it as the, um, as it was, including the grass. Uh, some of them I used the a branch for example just to basically make the animal look like they're sitting on something otherwise they're going to look like they're floating in the air. So now I'm just going through this is the uh, wolf that I was working on and you can use the ink to also blend and um, add and spread around as you inking. Uh, it can help you actually as you're working through your pieces to add color to areas that do not have any color. So I guess that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to like and share. Feel free to comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Till the next one. Bye.